Hello to everybody in this room. My name is Georg Kostner, so I hope you can listen to me also in the end of the room. You, you hear me? And today I will speak about uh, end user experience monitoring. Alexa is something new we uh, created together with uh, Alan. I will speak about him a little bit later in, uh, in my presentation. Uh, myself, I'm in the IT field now for 20 years. Uh, in the last five, six, six years, I'm working in the monitoring field. And uh, in these six years experience, uh, we worked, uh, provided some uh, several services in data center monitoring. And in different projects, there came out often the question, yes, the data center is providing the service. The performance of monitoring system says that the performance is okay. The application is working fine, but the end users are still complaining availability or performance in the reactivity of application. So this was one field that uh, customers or IT managers asks for to, to solve this issue or to give an answer to the question, how is the experience of the end user in the application in the monitoring field to address these topics. And the result uh, is now what I'm going to present in the next uh, half an hour. So I hope we can also organize this presentation, maybe some interactively. So if there are some questions which during the presentation are raised, please hand up the hands and give me a sign so we can also talk about uh, some questions during the presentation. A uh, <coughs> few words to the company I'm working on. I'm uh, working in Word Phoenix. Word Phoenix is a company which belongs to the Word Group. We have the headquarter in Italy, Bolzano and the second uh, branch in Rome. Uh, the company is focusing on implementation on ERP system in the Microsoft Dynamics ERP field, also a CRM uh, application project within the Word Group uh, and also on the market. Myself and the company are responsible for the infrastructure, system management solution and providing services uh, on the market in this field. Uh, the work itself, the headquarter is in Germany, is a huge company where the core business is trading and uh, assembling fasteners. So there are 30,000 sales rep around the world which are selling over 100,000 products uh, on the market. So the World Phoenix belongs to the World Group, which is a German uh, group, a German company. And Wood Phoenix itself providing services like CRM, ERP, system, manage, system management solution, system monitoring solution to uh, the Wood Group and to the market. So this give you uh, some idea where I'm coming. We are also providing these service, services obviously in the monitoring field to our company Wood itself, which use SAP. And there are also some experience how we use the engine Alexa to monitor SAP application and to get a feeling how SAP is reacting on end user performance. Uh, Alexa itself is a solution which came uh, from Alan, Alan Pipitone, as the name says, he's an Italian guy, he lives in Milan. I met him in 2012. He uh, showed me some prototype in this computer vision area. He's focused on robotics, uh, automation and so on. So this is the field he came from. And he showed with his solutions and prototypes the possibility to optimize application from the computer vision, artificial vision point of view, so that a human interaction can, uh, how a human interaction can be simulated on a Windows PC or even on Linux or Macintosh. So the idea in this field was to combine his knowledge on computer vision, robotics, and so on, and the monitoring field. And on 2012, uh, it started to develop Alexa, the first uh, release. It was a project which we did in uh, Diesel Jeans. So this is a little bit about the history. Uh, Diesel Jeans had uh, this question. I need to measure the performance of my user application. And in, th in this case was SAP uh, again uh, over a Citrix farm in Japan. So they have the headquarters in Italy, but they need to know how fast their uh, Citrix SAP published over Citrix is working in Japan. So the IT manager had some complaint from uh, around the world, 
especially from Japan, that they have also different time zones. And we had to work out a solution to get him the feeling how they how fast and how availability is the application in on the other side of the world. So this was the problem uh, on this area, how to monitor Citrix or terminal server application, but in this case was Citrix from the user perspective. So not to know, okay, Citrix farm is up, CPU, RAM, uh, and all uh, file system and all these stuffs in the data center are working fine, but to have really the knowledge how fast the application is uh, reacting on uh, the user field, on the other side on a client PC, and uh, even if Citrix or directly. And this should work not only for one single application, obviously it should work for several different applications. In that case, one was SAP, the other one was a business intelligence uh, solution built uh, over Hyperion, uh, if I remember well. And another topic which uh, during the years came out uh, from the monitoring field, and this was another uh, scenario on another customer, which had to monitor again SAP, uh, but in this case SAP was outsourced in Telecom, Telecom Italia in this case, and obviously uh, this company had not the chance to implement some agents in an outsourcing system because Telecom didn't provide him the possibility to install agents, to install a monitoring system in their uh, data center, So, but the customer was would like to monitor the availability of the application so that he has numbers, SLA numbers, availability uh, against the telecom provider uh, to measure the services. So not only to trust to the reports which the provider uh, provides to him, but also have the possibility to monitor the application, even if it is deployed over Citrix. So in that case, uh, they looked for a solution how to monitor application. For a web application, this is something we already do in a lot of different cases. Maybe somebody of you already used WebInject, Sahi, uh, Selenium, or other solution where you simulate a uh, web transaction. So in this case was the idea not to simulate or the challenge to simulate web transaction, but to simulate real application, even if they are deployed over terminal server Citrix or on a local uh, installation. In this case, there was uh, born the idea to develop something new, to, to create something which can address this uh, uh, problem or to address this challenge, to make a really monitoring from the end user experience. So not on the data center side, but from the point of view from the end user and to have the performance figures from the end user. Uh, how to achieve this target, to automate the application through the simulation of the user interaction. So it really means to, to create something which reacts like a user. So if a user moves the mouse around, fills up uh, text fields and so on, clicks on the desktop, the desktop obviously should be the same as a normal user that, uh, to simulate on the same desk. So it means that if on this desktop is an antivirus installed, also on this simulated desktop obviously so it should be installed the antivirus and the desktop from the performance point of view should be uh, the same. So not on this simulation machine, we uh, install, I do not know, uh, three gigahertz or quad core CPU and the user has only a dual core and has not the same performance. So to create a system which reacts like a user to achieve two targets, one is to measure the reliability of the application, the availability, but also to get the performance data and from the performance data to get the performance data of each single user action. So it means that if he click on OK or fill up a form, click OK, so that each action can be measured and sent back to the monitoring system. So I will show it later how this uh, works and how uh, the figures then in Nagios, for example, are uh, sent back. Uh, another important issue was if these test cases was created to simulate the user interaction, uh, how to create these test cases in a way that uh, they have not rewritten every time the application change. So obviously if the application change is big and a new application is created, also the test cases has to be rewritten, but the test, uh, these automated test cases should not be changed if, for example, the button is on the right side and the application developer moved on the left side. 
So this system should be able, like a human, he see the button to look around the desktop and, to, and able to recognize where the button resides on and then move the mouse, for example, on this place. The same thing for text fields, menu items, or something like that. So the, this was a challenge to create these test cases and to create this, uh, this engine in a way that we have not to rewrite every time if resolution changed, color changed, or something like that. Uh, to rewrite the test case by new or to have these efforts. And at the end was the target that this new agent, engine should be also available in an open source uh, form. Uh, we were looking around uh, how uh, to achieve this target and these several technologies which is written down uh, came in the field out of it. Maybe uh, some of you already know the possibility to automate application uh, uh, on Windows field with AutoIt. OpenCVU is uh, an engine which is able uh, to recognize in an artificial way the, the desktop. So to have an image, I will show you later how this engine, you can imagine how this engine works. Uh, Tesseract OCR scanner, uh, which is able, if you have recognized an image where a text is inside, so that we can really have in the application in the test cases then the, the string itself. So the disable from our image to uh, uh, bring back to the application to the test case the string uh, which uh, the user has to, inter, uh, has to put in or the application brings on the desktop. Uh, the first version of uh, Alexa used XML for the definition of the test cases. Then in a second step came in that we need something more powerful and for that we took the decision to use Python as a scripting langu language to create, uh, to have the possibility to create simple test cases but also to extend the test cases in a very powerful way. So this was uh, the result which more or less in January uh, this year uh, was available and run in a productive environment, like I said before, in diesel genes, in their data center to monitor the SAP application which was published over Citrix. So we have, uh, can imagine that this engine, Alex, is deployed on a Windows 7, Windows 8, or a Windows server, in this case was a Windows 7 machine, that's like a normal user in this environment use Windows 7, so the engine is deployed uh, in this environment and the technology, OpenCFU, Tesseract and all this stuff was in, uh, embedded or uh, linked in this engine. The test case itself on the, le on the left side, you see it on this slide, or express it in an XML structure. The engine interpret uh, these XML files and execute the application in an automatic way get uh, the result, the result or the application works or not works, so that is able to send back to the monitoring system an okay warning or critical. And he also recognized from the interactively, from the interaction from the user, the performance data. So each action, uh, the engine is able to say, okay, to move this mouse, to click on okay, the, the application came back with the data, took 500 milliseconds, for example, to send this data back to the monitoring system. So that with this data, then we can also create some performance graphs with BNP, for uh, example. Uh, from the monitoring perspective, so one is to say, okay, application or is available, I can start or not. The second one is, is the user interaction from the performance point of view within the thresholds I provide. So the thresholds in these cases are provided in the engine so that the engine is able to send back to the monitoring system a warning if a threshold from the performance from the application uh, is uh, over. If I set the threshold, for example, one second, and then the test case took one and a half second is a warning, then I can send, uh, I can also define a second threshold on a critical, so if the application took for s uh, some test scenarios more than two seconds, it sends back to the uh, monitoring system this uh, critical. Uh, OpenCV is uh, the technology which is embedded inside Alexa, which is able to recognize the desktop like we do it with the eyes. Uh, Alexa Engine use OpenCV to uh, make the screenshots of, 
of the desktop of the user in different ways so that he then can recognize uh, the images, text boxes and so on on the screen. There are only examples how is the way Alexa is seeing the desktop with different colors, with different uh, algorithm to recognize the objects on the desktop. So the engine used several different uh, algorithm implemented in OpenCV to recognize the object like we do it with the eyes. So the engine uh, do it in that uh, way so that for example, he takes out some color, so if the application changed the color for, for the engine, change nothing because he used some algorithm that the color is not anymore so uh, important. After we uh, realized the first test cases, and there was around 20, 25, something like that, uh, there came out some challenge if the test cases are handled in XML files. So XML files uh, is an expressive markup language, but on the other hand, uh, is not a scripting language like Python or some other uh, programming languages. And to handle application exceptions in uh, XML could be uh, a problem. To manage a lot of different XML files and to change then the test case itself could be complex for uh, the guys who, who has to create these test cases uh, to in uh, to create some plugin, for example, to get the data from a test database, which should be used for uh, some test cases, could also be some problem uh, to realize all these kind of things in XML. So there was some drawbacks to use XML. It was the first release, so that we have. Uh, confidence that the engine is uh, achieving the target, what was to measure the user uh, interaction, but uh, we realized that, that uh, XML could not be the way to create these kind of test cases. Uh, to create as a complex and maintain large automated test cases in XML was not uh, the right choice or was not the way that we would like uh, to proceed. It was also really a problem to handle uh, application exceptions. So if the application for some reason interact in a different uh, way, it was not possible in XML to create this kind of code. So this was uh, another problem or the uh, to create plugins. This is only uh, an example. So every time some uh, extension has to be written, the engine must be provided this in XML markup language so other one can integrate some new additional functionality. So this, for these drawbacks, uh, there was the situation to create something new. This was also the feedbacks from uh, diesel genes uh, and from the guys which created the first test cases that they really run in these kind of problems. Also the complexity uh, to manage these XML files was uh, huge. There are no either to create these kind of XML files. So how to write by hand these XML files for test cases took time. So they was clear that something new must come out. This is what now is available and what the next uh, or the second generation of Alexa was created. One was uh, to find a way to express these uh, test cases in a more powerful way and the choice was to use Python. So we saw that the, all the technology, OpenCV, uh, Testa, for the OCR scanner and so on, uh, was quite easy to integrate it in Python. Python is a very powerful scripting language so that everybody with the API provided can extend the functionality of this engine in a way he likes. He can implement test cases, more complex scenarios, how everybody likes in Python with all the powerful which the programming languages uh, provides and all these libraries which are around the Python or available. Another uh, step was how to create these kind of test cases. So we need uh, an IDE, an environment to provide to the uh, developers for the test cases so that they can really create, manage test cases in an easy way. Uh, obviously to create an IDE, an IDE from zero is not an easy stuff. So why to create something new if on the open source field ex exists already uh, integrated development environments for Python. So in this area, was uh, Alan took the decision to use Ninja. I do not know if some of you know it uh, or ha has already used Ninja. is an integrated development environment for uh, Python. 
and has the availability to create plugins. So Python with uh, Ninja and Alexa plugins. And here on the left side, you see the icons uh, of uh, the plugins which came out with helps then to create these kind of test cases. So that to create really simple test cases to uh, automize application on a Windows environment, SAP, Citrix application, uh, you have not to write no code. So this uh, application with the plugin generates the Python code in an automatic way. So you see here the several uh, few, few of lines of Python code. So it is not necessary to write Python code. This will be generated by the plugin itself if the test cases are easy. But if you, if you need, you have the choice, obviously, uh, then to extend uh, these capabilities and to extend all your test cases with uh, Python itself and to add additional code. How is the architecture for Alexa now uh, built? Or how is uh, it is composed? OpenCV, as I already explained, analyze and extract all of the information from the desktop. The OCR is uh, the engine which extracts the text itself, so that on the Python code we really can get strings and works uh, with strings. Uh, the engine is also able to recognize different buttons, drop-down menus, and all these kind of things in, a, in an automatic way. And at the end, there's also the possibility to interact with the application, obviously, to simulate mouse and keyboards. So all these are integrated in the Alexa engine, which from Python APIs can be uh, addressed. And obviously, at the end, we need also the performance data measurement so that we can integrate this uh, also in the test case to send it back to the monitoring system. And was on the idea on behind on that was really important that in that case is really the performance from the application when it reacts on the on the desktop itself, non, uh, not when the communication on the network is happened and finished, when the information is shown on the application itself. So it means if the on the desktop it runs an antivirus and it blocks the desktop in a certain time period during the day, also Alexa will have the same problem as a user will have. And this can be uh, recognized by the IT department. This is the IDE and uh, there are uh, already available some widgets to create test cases. So on the left side there are the several buttons to bind an object, to bind up, uh, text fields, to uh, design keyboard action, mouse events, and so on. So these can all be uh, created with uh, without writing bytecode using the IDE, and on the backhand, the IDE is writing the bytecode in the in the backhand. And uh, for uh, extensibility, you can then also integrate some own Python code for extend the uh, the test cases itself or to use Python libraries to get test data out from other databases or other resources. The toolbar provides all these functionalities. So here are listen, uh, there's a list on all these kinds of possibility uh, to bind the Windows region so that you, if the uh, engine is looking around the desktop, so if you every time give the all the desktop, that he has to analyze the performance could be uh, slower for the engine. So if you provide look on the button on this region on the screen, it, he will be faster. Uh, obviously, the application changed if the button is moved from the top right to the left. Uh, on this case, it will not anymore work. So you have a little bit careful how you uh, define this kind of uh, analysis for the engine. He can also analyze all the desktop uh, every time. Then he took a little bit more. Uh, time, but you can bind application objects, uh, images, uh, text fields. Uh, very important uh, is that all the action uh, Alexa do uh, is also written in a log file. So if you have to analyze why the application blocked, you will also get a screenshot in that case, so that you can really see what happens if there came out some application errors, so that you can recognize the test case breaks for that case. 
this uh, log files is created on the desktop where Alexa runs and on the end he's also able to send by email this uh, email this screenshot to some email addresses or keep it on the desktop and look on the log files. At the end, uh, on the bottom you see also the Nagios utilities. This means that in the code you can then generate on which uh, path you would like to get the performance data and the monitoring stuff so that you can integrate uh, in the test case to say okay on this action I will measure the performance I will set my thresholds for warning and criticals so that in this case the engine is create this information and then send it back uh, the engine will s normally redeploy it to use the NS client so that with NS client or executed these test cases, the NS client get back the data from the engine and Nagios receive the information over the NS client. So this is the way how this data came from the engine back to the Nagios. And then at the end, you can uh, write, uh, create the PNP graphs or some other measurement tools where you would like to integrate this kind of information. So there are some examples how to create test cases uh, with, with the IDE. So there came out the courses so that you can uh, tell to the IDE which kind of region you would like to bind, how to identify objects, to anchor the objects, how for what texts the engine has to look for, and so on. And the code is at the end generated in an automatic way. So here is an example of the left side on the, this is a web page on the left side and uh, below you see if this image is bind uh, with the either, uh, which kind of code uh, is generated in an automatic way. There are other examples, here is another region on the web page, there is a bind of object and you see the about. So in this case, in this region, the engine is looking for the string about. So there are several ways and on the web page, there are also published now some examples on tutorial how to create these kind of test cases. And together with Alan, we are trying to create more and more examples and tutorials how to create uh, test cases with, uh, with the engine. So this is uh, what uh, I explained before on this slide, how is executed the test cases. So the monitoring system, you can uh, schedule it with in a common way uh, with a, a test uh, with a check so that you can use a monitoring system, whatever you want, and execute the test case with the NS client, which then execute uh, the Alexa engine and send back all this of information. So this is the deployment arch architecture and it's very easy. So there are already all staffs present so that this kind of scenario can be created and can be deployed on a monitoring uh, environment. This is a project uh, which we did. The application which are monitored in that case are not uh, uh, what they are written down here, this is an idea to show you, uh, but uh, on, uh, on another deployment scenario, there are around over the world all Alexa engines which execute application testing so that uh, in that case, the customer can compare the performance of uh, his centralized Citrix farm from the different countries. So something like that. So there are uh, from here are the, all the checks for in, uh, from Nagios. And uh, uh, behind every check, the performance graphs are generated in an automatic way. And the check is quite simple. So it's in this case, the, ask uh, the customer asks only to create a very simple uh, test case to make a logon on Citrix on a desktop. So the Citrix farm provide, provides a desktop, uh, make logon and log off. So nothing more. They would they ask only to be sure that their Citrix farm are working over the world for everybody and to get the performance data. And you see here also the on the same time, on Wednesday at 12 o'clock, uh, there are some uh, differences between these uh, Citrix farms. And this is from the user point of view. So this is how fast Citrix and Alexa 
was able to collect uh, to connect to the Citrix farm and to get the desktop and then makes the log off. So you can also see on the performance graph on, on each test case, open window, login time, click start, uh, click log off, and the log on time. So the entire test case time and each single step uh, will be tracked. And then on uh, each, uh, for each several farms, there was great several uh, services for Nagios to execute these test cases and to have all these numbers in a central monitoring system and to get warning and criticals if some uh, thresholds from the performance point of view uh, was not achieved or uh, Citrix was not uh, reachable for the, for the engine or for the user itself. So this is the scenario. So you can spread around the engine. Uh, at present, the engine is only available for Windows, for Windows environments, Windows 7, Windows 8, uh, Windows server systems. But all the architecture, Python, OpenCV, and all these kind of libraries are also available for Mac OS and for Linux environment. So this a engine can also work on a Linux desktop or on a Mac OS. At present, we will uh, try to finish for the Microsoft platform because it's one of the most used around the world. But uh, the same engine will also be available then on the other platforms. So to test Citrix farms, for example, you can also imagine to deploy all on a Linux, to use, for example, a frame buffer on Linux environment so that you can execute more test cases on a single box. Uh, on a Windows, this is not possible. So to scale with test cases, you need more Windows boxes because the application are running itself and they cannot execute on the same time. Otherwise, the engine has a problem to recognize on the screen uh, the, the, the correct position. So the only way to scale on Windows is to have more Windows 7 or Windows 2000 uh, Windows servers where you deploy the test cases. On a Linux environment with frame buffers, you can also scale on a single box. Okay. So in this way, <laughs> We hope and we guess to uh, achieve these uh, benefits so that we are really able to test the reliability and the availability of each application, even if the application are deployed or written in Java applets, Adobe Flash, use WNC, Terminal Server, Citrix, uh, ERP system, and so on. So with this engine, we are able to test uh, and to automize every uh, application, mainframe application, and so on. Collecting performance data for every application and to get the user actions so that you have really a feeling how the if the performance of this user action are stable over the over the 24 hours, because obviously a user even if he tests an application he will not work for 24 hours. Alexa will do, and we have not to pay for him uh, some uh, additional hours. He will work every day. Uh, and make this kind uh, of tests and to achieve also the target that uh, the system is so flexible and he can work against changes on the application level. So that not every change on an application means to rewrite the test case uh, or to invest a lot of time uh, in the test cases. I will be honest, obviously if some application uh, change uh, their way to show the data and something you have to work a little bit on the algorithm to uh, train the engine to use the, uh, the best algorithm to recognize the objects on the screen. But uh, with some experience, and then the test cases will be really uh, stable and uh, also easy to create. Uh, there are a lot of additional ideas how can be uh, the engine new features which are asked to, to create it more powerful, to create also some um, more intelligence on the engine. So the list of features or ideas which are still in progress to improve the engine, to improve the way to make this kind of tests are huge. But I think with this first release, we already get very good results on several projects. And I hope also if somebody likes to test it, to use it, uh, to make some experience, we'll also enjoy uh, to use the present uh, release of uh, Alexa.
one idea which came out is also, uh, and this was on the other project because they had a very huge Citrix farm and they deploy, yes, every week, maybe some new application or change the uh, way the application are deployed so that it's not very useful uh, to create for each application a test case. Maybe there could be create some uh, automatically way to that Alexa can understand which kind of application are deployed over the Citrix farm and can try to connect to Citrix, start the application, see if the application or uh, if he is able to start the application, close the application, and send back all this information to the monitoring system. So that there is something like a discovery. Uh, this can be realized with the Citrix API, so that over the Citrix, uh, Citrix API, the engine knows which kind of application are deployed, and then can try to start all these kind of applications. So this is a way to see how fast he is able to start the application, and obviously if the application are available for the end use. The idea or uh, the is in the every time to put the engine close where the user resides. So Alexa can also obviously deploy it in the data center on a virtual environment, but to get really the, the feeling if the application are available for the end user, so Alexa should be on the uh, user field. So if the users are on a other office far away, so then the engine should be also deployed in that case, so that you really know the application, the user can start some application over Citrix, over their network, and so on, so that all these kind of uh, Layers in an IT infrastructure are also tested. Also, to automate more action, to record, for example, to this is an idea to record a, uh, like uh, Sahi do, so that is able to create some interaction and to generate the code how you use the application, so that you that the, to write the test cases will be uh, more uh, simple, uh, and also to increase uh, the flexibility. Application errors in some cases should be also improved because the application in some situation can run in an error and a user, if he sees some warnings on the screen, click maybe OK and then restart the application or something like that so that Alexa is also able to handle these kind of errors in a more powerful way. At present, this error handling has to be written by hand. So it means if they're in the application can erase some uh, warnings, pop-ups on something like that, in the code must be handled. Otherwise, the engine in this area will be blocked, sent back a critical, and you will receive uh, a critical that the, the application is not uh, working. And also, this uh, create as a, so that is more powerful in the training of the user interaction, so that the intelligence which is able, which the engine has inside, will be more and more powerful, so that the, to write test cases will be more easy. All this information are available also from the web page, uh, alexamonitoring.com. Uh, there is also the download so that you can download the IDE, uh, execute it, play around, uh, get some first experience. Uh, all the code is published on GitHub. So you can also have a look inside the code examples. Some examples are also published uh, on uh, GitHub. And we are trying to provide some first tutorials for very easy test cases, but to get a first feeling how to create test cases, how to execute it. So we have still a little bit time, so I will try to show you a simple test case. Yes. There is some complexity. No. Yeah, parts gone. So. so this is the IDE. It's organized in several uh, projects. And there is a, a very easy test case to execute WordPad, to change the font, to write Hello World in the WordPad, and to close the application. So this is a quite easy. Uh, Test case uh, here, 
is all the code which is generated in Python in an automatic way. So it's nothing more. So let me try to execute it in the hope that it works. So in the download area of uh, the web page, uh, in this install sheet is all inside, also the Python environment and so on. So all what you need to uh, try to execute some test cases or inside. So this is the example. Now WordPad is executed. Now Alexa will change the font in the WordPad, write Hello World and close the application. Here you see the outputs of the single steps, all the steps on the single steps, and here you can define the threshold of warning and critical of each step and uh, to measure the, to get the warning and criticals on the single user steps, so that you have also the possibility to say, okay, if the application is not reacting from the performance point of view within a, so uh, within a second or within some threshold, so that you really know this. So this is some uh, uh, way to get then on the monitoring system warnings and criticals. Um, one idea which we are also trying to working on, for example, to measure a Citrix lat latency, so how we can measure from the user point of view Citrix lat latency, is to trying to create a test case from the engine point of view to execute, for example, Vot, Votpad or some other application, and to insert simple characters over Citrix and Alexa is measuring how fast Citrix is displaying these characters back on the application. And to do this with a lot of, so to let work Citrix in a, uh, in a lot of way from the communication point of view, and then measure each feedbacks from the, from the application point of view, and then to write back uh, the latency with uh, some uh, uh, average measurement, standard deviation, and something like that, so that we can try to in this case, is another approach to try to measure the Citrix latency from the end use and the application point of view from how the application reacts and not from the network uh, point of view. So that if you have these metrics and these numbers, you can really have the feeling, okay, the Citrix farm on the other side of the world is really reacting with the latency you expect for the end user and not with some network tools which are saying, okay, the latency is all fine, but the user are still complaining that he write the code or he writes some text in Outlook or something else, and then he waits for one, two seconds, and then he see appearing uh, the texts. So this is something I hear often, and this is a way that we will try uh, to, uh, to create some latency measurement using this kind of uh, engine. So now the test case was also slower because my antivirus <laughs> was started. You can see it here. And obviously, I also see that uh, now the test case is running in a slower way. So, this is what we have created and is now available with Alexa. I hope you enjoyed and there was some useful information and if there are questions, please. Um, Not too difficult question, please. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, do you think this could be available for Linux? Uh, it is. It, it is. is not deployed on the web page. Uh, because in the first time we was uh, focused more on our Windows platform but uh, all the engine are also available on Linux and it could be provided. A present is not available, so but it Basically could be. the same way that you're using uh, an S-Client, I mean, with an RPE? Okay. The same way, so this will not change. All Python and all the libraries, if you lo also look on OpenCVU, you see also that this project came from a Linux environment. So I not told not before because uh, maybe somebody knows C Cooley. Uh, it's an engine similar to Alexa. We saw it uh, that uh, this kind of application exists around the open source field uh, later on. So not when we took the decision uh, to create uh, Alexa. 
uh, but using the same engine as OpenCV, the approach is similar, something we tried to create more simple because it's very important uh, that the create test cases, the effort to create test cases will not be huge because otherwise uh, you will have problems during the project. But all the frameworks is available on all platforms. And at present, the uh, install sheet is only available <laughs> for Windows because for them you need something. Yeah, yeah. At the end, you can also use the IDE on. on the IDE is a Python IDE, so this will work on Mac, Linux, and Windows as well. The, the advantage with the Linux could be the frame buffer because you can create more frame buffers and then you can execute more test cases on different frame buffers and this will work on Microsoft. You will never have this possibility. So you need more Windows boxes to scale. Anyone else? In the download package is all included, uh, the OCR and the... All, yes. Okay. And uh, for OCR, sorry, for OCR is included uh, English, German and Italian languages, but if you would try to use other languages, then from the web page from the TESA, you can uh, download other OCR uh, languages. Uh, Alan also tried some time ago to with Japanese, so to recognize Japanese characters. Okay. And is it's possible to extract some information from the uh, displayed windows and send it back to the monitoring system? Yes. It is Python, so you have to code it at the present. <laughs> so this is one of the reasons why we took the decision. Uh, um, yeah, hey. Uh, what I haven't seen, uh, what that came so clear to my mind uh, was, at which step is being the Python plugin or the Python tool executed? Is it being done by the NS client yes. and then passively send the information back? There could be two ways to deploy. One is to design an Argos checks in an active way, then NS client execute the engine with the project name and execute the test case, but you could also work in a passive way so that these test cases are executed uh, from the NS client itself and send only back the information to Nagios uh, like a passive check. So both ways uh, are working fine. And you said it, of course, made no sense to execute uh, or to make two test cases at the same time uh, because it uh, would uh, weird the On the same box, on, on different box. boxes, yes. Correct. Uh, has Alexa some way to, um, I would say, to make sure that not already one plugin is being or one test case is being executed? So some kind of, oh, I'm not executing now this check because uh, one is already running. Uh, at present, it will happen some problems if it happens this. So you will see it on the monitoring system. Alexa itself is not checking that, but there's some stuff to improve in this area so that this can be handled in an automatic way. Okay, so I have to um, take care of that all the By your cases own are yeah. executed in a specific So that time. Uh, what is in this case important if you schedule the test cases must, if you have more than one test case, they must be sequence in a sequence way. And you execute one after uh, after the other ones, and if the uh, time periods is, for example, five minutes, so that the first test cases are finished within these five minutes, so otherwise you will run in a in a problem. Okay. Um, is there some kind of um, that are two checks or two test cases can build on each other? For example, I got one test case opening the application and one test case um, executing something, and the third yeah, yeah. test case. Uh, this closing is closing again the application that, for example, test case two is just being executed when test case one um, is active, for example. Uh, in, in that case, so this is the Python code. So these are the different way uh, the APIs to interact with the application. So then uh, you can use all the power of Python provides. You can also write classes uh, where you train these classes to say, okay, this is a class, for example, the Citrix log on, log off script. You can integrate in this in every other test case how you want. So if you sync a little bit like JUnit or Python unit test cases or something like that, if you create uh, uh, something uh, unit test cases way, so tier up, tier down and all these kind of stuff, you can also create really regression tests and something like that. But then you have sync 
how to write my test cases, how to organize my test system, like you do it with uh, other unit test case frameworks, and how to create this. This is the power of Python that you can then uh, use to create this. All these things of Alexa or Python code, so with APIs. So then you can model all this how you want. Uh, it is not created in a wizard way from the IDE itself. So then you use the IDE like a normal Python IDE and to, and to organize your code how you want. So this was also one of the reasons why we took the decision to use Python. So that you can really use in your test environments all the power of the Python environment, all the libraries which are around Python. Also during the test case to communicate, for example, with another web service because you will get some data from the web service insert in your test case. All these things can be realized, but you have to write, in this case, uh, okay. Python code. Thanks. Welcome. Um, you said that Alexa is able to um, detect images also if there was some change in the color or something. Is this something which is enabled by default or do you have any um, influence on these uh, values? Both. <laughs> Both. Mm -hmm. uh, there was, the engine was extended so that he tries uh, different ways to recognize it, mm -hmm. but with these tolerance values you can improve uh, the, the engine that you are more safe to get the information. So we, there are some uh, values and uh, where to look, how to look, which algorithm to use so that you will be more in a secure way. Mm -hmm. And for that you need some, uh, you get experience in the way how to use Alexa and how the tutorials are provided. That for these kind of font, maybe these uh, values are better because it depends also on the fonts. For the OCR scanner, for example, that it works fine. Or from the colors that another, another algorithm is working better with some uh, uh, parameters that other ones. Or for example, if you are uh, with the OCR scanner, we had also the experience that if an image uh, is bringing back uh, text values, uh, for example, I or L, uh, so that you can use in this case as a regular expression, or O or zero, uh, if it is, uh, uh, how if you make some pattern matching or something like that, so that you can also use the regular expression. So if the engine is not really recognizing the correct value, your test case will not break and you use the regular expression to make it more stable. Mm -hmm. If you can live in this case with this kind of uh, 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 crit uh, situation. But these are all features of the OpenCV library? Uh, or more or less, yes. But they provide a huge amount of way to mm -hmm. uh, recognize the visual uh, information. And with Alexa, try to add more information for this uh, topic for these targets. Okay. Thanks. How do you handle the security of the test box when it's um, installed near the, t the near the customer and when there are some someone type something on the keyboard or move the mouse during the test case do you lock the test the mouse or the keyboard? Uh, this is uh, at the end up of the customer but it should be locked. Uh, the, the screen. But if somebody is interacting with the desktop, then uh, he can break the test cases. This is true, yes. Alexa is not doing nothing in this area to secure this kind of environment at present. Okay, you must uh, secure the machine with a registry entry to lock the keyboard example, or the mouse, and then yes. it's okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Georg. Thank you and enjoy.